As Jesus sank into perpetual sleep, this man noticed something amazing happening. From almost death to heaven and back, this is evidence of life after death. On May 5, 2006, a Seattle man employed as a supervisor in the Juvenile Probation Department for King County had a life-altering incident. Known for his commitment to aiding teenagers, he frequently remarked, an unexpectedly prophetic remark, he would labor until the day he died. That same day, he had a kidney stone on his right side. Having dealt with kidney stones before, he first tried to bear the discomfort, but this time was different. The agony continued, so he visited the ER. He was shocked to find he also had a kidney infection, expecting the normal morphine and pain reliever regimen. The physicians arranged a stone breakup operation and prescribed antibiotics. One could wonder what might possibly go wrong. The operation passed without a hitch, but the medical team was unaware that the antibiotics lacked efficient combat capability against the infection. Sepsis and multiple organ failure resulted from the infection that entered his circulation during the stone breakthrough, clinically dead for an hour and 45 minutes. He experienced something quite remarkable during this period. He was a born-again Christian, hence he felt minimal anxiety thinking he would be reaching heaven. He spoke of the amazing speed with which he felt leaving his body and shooting across the hospital floor, the sky, and even outer space. He compared the trip to a Bible verse. To be gone from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. He felt great serenity and belonging when he arrived to heaven. From the trees to the flowers, everything in heaven greeted him. Seeing Jesus Christ personally was the most intense longing he experienced. He traveled throughout a forest, the trees separating before him, until he came to a clearing and saw Jesus. In that instant, his long-time wish was granted. Grateful beyond measure, he dropped to his knees and stared at Jesus' feet, often praising him. He came to see that Jesus' sacrifice was the sole reason he was in heaven. Looking up, he sensed great love shining from Jesus' whole existence. Jesus looked at him with pure love when their eyes locked at last, as though he had never disappeared. He had never felt before the incredible depth of love and pardon his eyes held. That really connected with him. It was taxing. He understood he really forgets it when Jesus tells he forgives you. The Bible describes this in the 8th and 10th chapters of Hebrews. He personally knew this. Knowing that the actual him would never die even though his body had passed, he felt an endless feeling of being. Looking at him following this great insight, Jesus answered, No, it's not your time. Go backwards. It was quite direct and matter-of-fact. Oddly, he was cool with it. He discovered he was flying over the woodland instead of walking back through it, as if flying wasn't the appropriate word. It more like just being anywhere you wanted to go. There was not a door or anything tangible when he arrived at the location he knew he would be departing from. It was simply a feeling that the following phase would carry him outside that domain. His body wasn't ready, hence he was happy he had more time in paradise. Sensing Jesus on the other side, he turned back facing the jungle. But his next view is captivating. Turning left of the forest he observed development in, he found rather magnificent movement. The mountains seemed like vivid, lively, moving ocean waves. He felt as though he should remain to experience this always. He went back to Jesus finally, approaching him from another direction. Once he bent before him once more, Jesus spoke to him some further. His light, a beautiful and loving light, wrapped around him and brought peace and warmth. Once more, he said, No, it is not your time. Retrace steps. Once more, he passed over the treetops, approaching the brink from which he would retreat off into his body. Once more, though, he felt his body was not ready. He traveled further, this time to the right, coming upon rivers alive and vivid blue seas. More vibrant than anything on earth were the colors. When he went back to Jesus for his last farewell, he saw his family. Mary, his grandmother, stood front of a gathering of family spanning decades. Their happiness and love were clear reflections of heavenly relationships. 
His family's presence confirmed they had been there all along. But this time, he concentrated on them since he felt an inexplicable bond. It was enlightening to see them in this level of harmony and pleasure. Once more gazing at him with those loving eyes, Jesus responded, No, it is not your time. If you enjoy our content and want to support us. Click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Retrace. All the God of creation seemed to go aside, realizing he was addressing him. He felt like a soldier getting a ready-to-follow directive. His grandma said, Bring as many of us back with you as you can, as he got ready to go. Emphasizing the need of sharing the love and reality of paradise, her remarks really connected. What followed was a miracle. Going back to his body brought mixed feelings. Re-entering, he discovered the medical team shocked as his cardiac monitor started to blip once more. It was striking how different the tranquility of paradise was from the anarchy of the hospital ward. Though physically weak and required time to heal, spiritually he felt restored. His background altered everything. Knowing our time here is limited and every moment counts, Hence, he now lives with more direction. Valuing every relationship with a fresh respect, he aims to communicate the message of God's love and really love others. Added to the wonder of his encounter, we're seeing animals and other entities in heaven, vivid and alive. His viewpoint on life, death, and the eternity has been permanently changed on this road. He carried strong and moving memories of heaven. The volume of animals he came across there had astounded him. They were all around, softly blended into the terrain. From Earth, he knew familiar species, as well as some entirely foreign ones. Living in perfect harmony with their surroundings, everyone seemed to have a particular spot in heaven. This picture made one realize that God's concern included all of his creation, including people not alone. He didn't connect personally with the animals since his main attention had been on Jesus and his family. However, their presence was clear and filled with happiness and tranquility. They seemed to be praising God in their own particular manner, therefore adding to the cosmic symphony of harmony. Heaven's beauty defied earthly description. More vivid than anything observed on earth were the hues. Warm and inviting, the light permeated everything. It never was harsh. Even an animate item, trees, flowers, and even a living entity seemed to have. There was no degradation or flaw. Everything lived in a perfect harmony. It was beautiful beyond fantasy. One of one of his most significant encounters was when Jesus directly entered his mind or spirit with knowledge. This information download was expressed in an instinctive knowledge rather than words. He had never before understood truths about God, heaven, and life. Now he knew them. Even if some of this knowledge disappeared upon his return to his earthly body, its core stayed and drastically changed his views. One of the revelations was a closer grasp of God's love. His knowledge fell short of the great love he encountered in paradise. He also developed understanding of the nature of eternity, the need of earthly decisions, and the reality of spiritual struggle. These ideas were one's earthly brains found difficult to completely understand. But that day he discovered something far more vital. He become more conscious of the spiritual energies both good and bad operating on the planet. This insight underlined the need of prayer and the need of carrying out the whole armor of God as the Bible describes. His viewpoint of earth changed irreversibly, death became a change to something far more beautiful rather than something to be dreaded. This knowledge did not mean he was rushing to die. He was resolved to live out God's intended use for him on earth. Still, he felt serenity when he considered going back to paradise when his time really came. Comparatively to the everlasting present of paradise, time on earth seemed brief. So earthly hardships were small. This insight sharpened his awareness of how he used every minute, knowing its everlasting relevance. Seeing unexpected faces in paradise changed his conception of atonement. 
he grew less critical since he realized that God's grace and favor are beyond human comprehension. Salvation isn't about adhering to strict rules, it's about accepting Jesus and his sacrifice. He learned to avoid making assumptions about anyone's spiritual state, knowing only God understands a person's heart. His sense of purpose on earth grew after his grandmother's message, bring as many of us back with you as you can. He felt a strong responsibility to share his story and help others understand heaven and God's love. Each day became an opportunity to live with the awareness that earthly actions have eternal consequences. His relationships transformed as he saw each person as deeply loved by God, which made him more patient, compassionate, and eager to share the love he had encountered. He also valued family relationships more, understanding their significance both in this life and in eternity. The feeling of welcome in heaven was unparalleled. On earth, he often felt out of place, but in heaven, those feelings vanished. Everything around him conveyed a profound sense of belonging and acceptance. This overwhelming love and welcome left a lasting impression. Heaven changed his view of the body. While physical bodies are important, they are temporary vessels for eternal spirits. In heaven, he felt more authentically himself, which made him less concerned with physical appearance and more focused on nurturing his spirit. Though he was focused on his own experience, he sensed that everyone in heaven was sharing the same joy, peace, and love. Each person experienced their perfect joy while being united in worship and love for God. Returning to earth was challenging. The beauty of heaven made him reluctant to leave, but he felt a divine purpose in being sent back, which gave him peace about his return. He now views his life on earth as a mission to share his heavenly experience and help others prepare for eternity. In heaven, worship was a constant state of being filled with pure joy and love. This understanding made him approach worship on earth with deeper enthusiasm and awareness, reflecting the heart's purest intentions. His perspective on work and daily activity shifted. He saw every task as an opportunity to bring a bit of heaven to earth, approaching them with the love and joy he experienced in heaven. This made him more intentional with his time and resources. He understood that prayer was a vital connection between heaven and earth. Although he didn't see specific prayers being received, he felt that God was intimately aware of and involved in earthly lives, deepening his appreciation for prayer. He saw angels in heaven and understood their purpose. They were constantly engaged in worship and fulfilling God's will, which gave him a greater appreciation for the unseen spiritual forces at work. But that's not all. His experience impacted his relationships with non-believers. He felt a greater urgency to share his faith, but approached it with patience and love, understanding that everyone's journey is unique. He aimed to invite others to faith rather than push them. He gained insight into free will and God's sovereignty, realizing that they work together in ways that are hard to grasp fully. God's love allows real choices, even when they result in suffering, but He works to bring good out of every situation. Though he didn't encounter evil in heaven, he understood its nature by contrast. The goodness and love he experienced showed him the stark reality of evil on earth, reinforcing the importance of bringing God's light into the darkness. His near-death experience removed any fear of death. He now sees death as a transition to something more beautiful and welcoming. While he's not in a hurry to leave, he welcomes his eventual transition with joy, knowing what awaits. The core message he shares is that God's love surpasses all understanding, heaven is real and more beautiful than imagined, and our earthly choices and actions have eternal significance. The key is a relationship with Jesus, not perfection or rule-following. In the end, he understood that while his experience is profound, the central story is God's love for humanity. He hopes his story encourages others to seek God and live with an eternal perspective. His tale inspires reflection on life, death, and what comes after. 
If you made it all the way to this part in the video, you may qualify for our membership, so you might want to listen closely. It's an exclusive area where we release videos that we cannot show to the general public yet. You will get to see everything first and learn about truths that we cannot reveal anywhere else. If you want to learn more and be a part of the community, hit the link in the description, in the pinned comment, or on our homepage. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation, it is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. As you explore the deeper realms of spirituality with us, becoming a member unlocks access to a range of exclusive content that dives into profound topics not covered in our general releases. This includes early access to videos where seasoned theologians and scholars dissect intricate theological concepts and share insights that deepen your understanding of divine mysteries. Membership also brings you into a supportive community of like-minded individuals who are all on their own spiritual journeys. Through this community, you can participate in discussions, share your experiences, and receive guidance on navigating your faith in complex times. Additionally, members receive monthly newsletters that highlight key spiritual themes, upcoming events, and personal testimonies that illustrate the powerful transformations faith can achieve. These stories not only provide encouragement and hope, but also offer practical advice on living a faith-filled life daily. We also host exclusive webinars and live Q&A sessions where you can ask questions directly to spiritual leaders, gaining personalized insights that are not available to the wider audience. This can be an invaluable resource for anyone looking to deepen their spiritual understanding or find answers to specific life questions. Remember, this membership is designed to be a resource for growth, inspiration, and community. Whether you're beginning to explore your spirituality or seeking to deepen your faith, our goal is to support you at every step of your journey. If you're intrigued by what you've heard and you're ready to dive deeper, click the link in the description, the pinned comment, or visit our homepage to join. We look forward to welcoming you into our community and sharing this profound journey together.